The train is perhaps the oldest means of transportation for both people and goods that is widely used to this very day. Over time, various types of propulsion have been tested and employed to increase transport speed and efficiency. Among these innovations, there was an ambitious attempt to create an incredible propeller-powered locomotive which came close to production. The German rail Zeppelin was one of the fastest trains ever made, but suffered from multiple inherent failures, making it basically useless. As the 20th century approached, trains were rapidly increasing in speed, pushing towards and even surpassing the remarkable 200 km mark. The key to achieving even higher speeds was finding a more viable propulsion method and a noteworthy development emerged from Germany. During this time, electric and diesel-electric propulsions were in their early stages and it became apparent that steam was not the most efficient way to propel trains. Franz Friedrich Kuckenberg, who had a background in mechanical engineering and experience as an aircraft engineer before World War I, displayed a strong passion for trains. He swiftly transitioned into the rail industry and set his sights on building high-speed locomotives. With collaboration of another skilled engineer, Hermann Furtinger, Krukenberg founded the company and together they designed a prototype locomotive. Their innovative concept involved using a powerful aircraft engine to drive a propeller, essentially creating a thrust-powered train. Although a similar idea had been realized by the Soviets back in 1917, the project had a short lifespan due to a derailment and fatal crash in 1921. Nevertheless, this demonstrated the potential of high-speed trains and it was evident that Krukenberg's design held great promise as well. The Schienen Zeppelin, or Rail Zeppelin, derived its name from its unique design, which drew inspiration from aircraft and airships. Krukenberg's background in aircraft and his understanding of aerodynamics, streamlining and lightweight materials played a pivotal role in achieving the locomotive's remarkable speed. Constructed in 1930, the Schienen Zeppelin featured an internal structure made of aluminum while certain parts of the outer body were covered with an impregnated canvas. A notable feature was the large propeller positioned at the rear, giving it a resemblance to an airship rather than a conventional train. This design allowed Krukenberg to keep the weight astonishingly low at just 20 tons. Unlike the typical 2x bogies commonly used even today, this train had just four wheels for the whole 26 meter long car. The car could comfortably accommodate 40 passengers and was capable of reaching speeds exceeding 200 km power. Initially, the Schienen Zeppelin was equipped with two Kodjo and BMW 4 six cylinder engines, but they were eventually replaced by a more powerful single BMW 6. 12 cylinder unit. This V12 engine, even with a low compression ratio of 5.5 to 1, produced an impressive peak power of over 600 horsepower at 1600 rpm. The water cooled gasoline engine weighed a reasonable 510 kilograms. Interestingly, its fuel consumption was approximately 72 liters per 100 kilometers. This high consumption necessitated covering long distances at speeds of 200 plus km power to achieve economic viability and optimal efficiency. The locomotive's defining feature and challenge lay in its pusher propeller propulsion mounted at the rear. The two-blade propeller was tilted at a 7 degree angle above horizontal to increase downforce, enabling the train to reach speeds of over 140 miles per hour. On June 21, 1931, the Schienen Zeppelin set a world rail record, solidifying its position as the fastest petrol-powered train globally, a distinction it retains to this day. Despite its impressive design, the Schienen Zeppelin had several inherent cons that hindered its practical use. 
One prominent drawback was the presence of a large open propeller at the rear, which posed significant dangers to the crowds at the train stations, also picking up and whirling air and dust behind the train. Moreover, the emphasis on aerodynamics and the front, with the propeller at the back, made it practically impossible to attach additional wagons to the locomotive, reducing its efficiency in carrying passengers. Additionally, because of the one-way design, without train turntables and track triangles, it was difficult to turn the train around. Short distance maneuverability back and forth was not easy either. The last but not least of the problems was the inability to climb steep gradients caused by a phenomenon called flow separation when in full power, requiring additional traction drive for this purpose. As said, too many inherent design flaws that could have been solved only by a different propulsion. As a result, the original design proved to be impractical and was quickly modified to feature a front-mounted diesel propulsion system using a fluid coupling to the front wheels. In hindsight, the Shinin Zeppelin serves as an example of a concept that appeared promising on paper but proved to be largely ineffective in real-world applications. The modified version, equipped with the Maybach GO5 diesel engine, was purchased by the German rail company in 1934 for 10,000 Reichsmark. It encountered numerous issues and spent more time stationary than in motion, despite undergoing several hundreds of miles of testing prior to its purchase. Eventually, the decision was made to dismantle the vehicle and its aluminum was repurposed for the aircraft industry in the late 1930s. Despite the setbacks and the locomotive's limited real-world application, the Schienen Zeppelin's ambitious design and innovations paved the way for advancements in high-speed rail transport. It became a learning experience that inspired future rail designs and contributed to the ongoing progress in the field of transportation.